I hope you're having a wonderful day. So today, I am in Oxfordshire at the Rollwright Stones, which is a Neolithic prehistoric, you can see it there over my shoulder, there it is. Those are the Rollwright Stones. Now there's a lot of mystery about the origin of these stones and where this stone circle first came from and how it was created. There's a lot of myths also associated. This stone structure has three different sites uh, connected to it. This is the first, so I'm gonna show you the others in a few minutes here. But there's a lot of mystery related to it. It's wonderful because this is called the King's Men, the circle of stones here behind me. So a lot of people are familiar with Stonehenge, but there are actually a lot of different sites scattered across the British Isles of prehistoric Neolithic type sites like this. A stone circle is a monument of stones arranged in a circle or an ellipse. Such monuments have been constructed in many parts of the world throughout history for many different reasons. The best known tradition of stone circles exist in the British Isles. There are over 1,000 surviving examples of stone circles. The stone circles in the British Isles, to include the Rollwright stones, were created in the late Neolithic to early Bronze Age period, with construction taking place between 3300 and 900 BC. The Rollwright stones are made up of three distinctive sites. What we have here behind me, which is known as the King's Men, the King's Stone, and the Whispering Knight's Tomb. All the stones here in the stone circle are a different shape and a different size. They all appear to be quite poxmarked, but that is from people who have, over the generations, taken different stones and chipped off pieces. The stones have also knocked over at different points in time and been re-stood up to kind of give them the current look that they have right now. Numerous scientists, researchers, astronomers, astrologists, archaeologists have studied this site over the centuries. One notable is Sir Norman Lockyer, who founded Nature magazine. A pioneer of archaeoastronomy, Lockyer visited the stones in 1868, 1873, and 1905, and discussed them in his book on astronomical alignment and prehistoric monuments, which was published in 1906. Lockyer's study of the Rollwright stones is noted for debunking the myth that the King's Stone, shown here, was a marker for the summer solstice. It is suspected that the King's Stone was erected in 1500 BC as a marker for a nearby burial ground. The unique shape of the King Stone comes from the fact that over the years and over the centuries, people and pacifiers have chipped off small pieces of it and taken them home and carried them as talismans of good luck. That's why you see it's kind of carved at the bottom. That's where people were chipping at. And as you get higher up, the more the original shape exists. The shape has changed over time. 400 meters east of the stone circle and probably predating its construction by over a thousand years, lies the Whispering Night Stone. These stones, which are four upright stones and one fallen over capstone, actually represent and mark a prehistoric burial site. It is estimated that using rollers, levers, sledges, and some form of hammers that it will take in over 60 people to move and erect the Whispering Night Stones. The King's Stone, the Whispering Night Stones, and the King's Men's Stone Circle all get their name from a legend which state that a king was outwitted by a witch and they were all petrified and turned into stone. There are numerous stories, legends, and myths surrounding the Rollwright Stones. From a pure scientific perspective, it is not really known which culture or to whom the creation of the stones should be, should be credited. And although the stones are impressive, the most interesting thing about the Rollwright Stones would have to be the numerous myths, legends, and folklore that surrounds the site. So if you're passing through Oxfordshire, stop by and pay the Rollwright Stones a visit. <laughs>